When your engine fails at low altitude, you have two choices. Land straight ahead, making slight heading changes, or attempt to turn back to the runway that you just departed from. Turning back has been called the impossible turn, and certainly for many pilots, it has been just that, as their turn back attempt has quickly turned into a deadly stall spin. The impossible turn really is a misnomer, as a turn back following an engine failure has successfully been completed before. The key is knowing both your abilities and the capabilities of your aircraft. A few hundred feet off the ground with a failed engine is not the time to decide what you're going to do. One of the keys to good pilot decision making is good preparation. You need to decide before an incident takes place what you're going to do and then put that plan into action if and when the time comes. Let's take a look at a tool that you can use in your aircraft to help you decide on a safe altitude to attempt to turn back to the runway. First climb to 3,000 feet above the ground. Line up along a road or a highway. Take note of a landmark to help indicate the beginning as well as the end of a simulated runway and then initiate a climb at best rate. As you climb through 3,500 feet, quickly close the throttle. To make this realistic, slowly count to five to simulate the delay that most pilots will have during an engine failure. One, two, three, four, five, push. Best glide attitude, starting a turn. Remember, you need to get lined back up on the road, so some additional maneuvering will be necessary. If there's a crosswind, turn into the wind, or you'll be pushed further away from the extended center line. Remember that your airplane will behave differently in various weather conditions. Strong winds can have a drastic effect on your ability to make the field. Remember too that it's useless to get lined up with the runway if you find yourself short or long of the landing area. Take a note of your altitude once you're realigned with the runway. Also take note of your position on the simulated runway. Did you come up short or were you long? Now begin the process again until you find the attitude and bank angle combinations that allow you to make the turn back without stalling and allows you time to properly prepare the aircraft to land. For the majority of single engine light aircraft, this will require a minimum of five to 600 feet or more, any less than that and the risks rise significantly. Now that you've discovered your turn back altitude, practice it and then practice it some more and always add a reasonable margin of error to your initial response time and the difference from an engine that is stopped rather than one producing idle power. If you do have an engine failure, it's now decision time. A turn back should be done only as a last resort and only when conditions are favorable. Simply knowing your turn back altitude isn't enough as many factors will contribute to its failure or success. The most important thing you can do is know the area surrounding the airport that you're departing from before you climb into the aircraft. If you have a good landing spot in front of you, don't take the risk. Land straight ahead. Single engine aircraft are designed to be stressed in a forward motion. Statistically, you have the best chance of walking away from the aircraft by continuing ahead and setting up for a landing. If you're below your turn back altitude, do not attempt to turn back. Remember, you need a minimum of five to 600 feet, as we calculated earlier. Choose the straight ahead option. It's unlikely that you'll complete a turn back safely. If you're at or above your turn back altitude and there's no suitable landing site ahead of you, then and only then should you consider turning back. Make sure you consider the strength and direction of the wind, as well as any obstacles that may exist on this particular runway. Your best option may still be to land straight ahead. The technique you'll need to use must be precise. Lower the nose to your best glide attitude first. Then begin your turn back, keeping your bank angle to a maximum of 30 degrees to ensure you're well above a stall. Your airspeed will need to be spot on. Too fast and your turn will be excessively wide. Too slow and you'll increase both your rate of descent and come dangerously close to stalling. Remember, be committed to your minimum turn back altitude. Remind yourself of it during your pre-takeoff briefing. Before pushing the throttle forward, you should already know what you'll do and where you'll go if your engine does fail. Having a plan and sticking to it will make the critical takeoff phase much safer for you and your passengers. <laughs>